Before the federal government can get the matter of corporate tax cuts into the parliament, it has to deal with the issue of voluntary euthanasia. As we were discussing earlier with Matthias Cormann, tomorrow the Senate will begin debating a private member's bill to repeal a 1997 Commonwealth law that blocked the territories from legalising medically assisted dying. Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm first introduced the private member's bill back in 2015 and it has the backing of the ACT and the NT chief ministers who have taken out a full page ad today in support of the bill. Senator Lionhelm has said he did a deal with the government to allow his bill to be debated this week in return for his support for the revival of the Australian Building and Construction Commission. I was not part of any conversations in which uh, such a commitment was made and the Prime Minister uh, himself has also denied that such a commitment was made uh, and indeed uh, you know, in the Senate this week this is being discussed not because the government facilitated this but because uh, the Labor Party, the Greens and a sufficient number of crossbenchers uh, voted uh, to make that happen. That's the Finance Minister Matthias Cormann speaking to us a little earlier. Well, Senator D David Lionhelm is with the Liberal Democrats. He, David Lionhelm, welcome back to breakfast. Good morning. What is your motivation for this bill? Are you a supporter of euthanasia or just a supporter of the territories being able to control their own laws? Well, both, actually. Um, obviously, for an elected parliament in, in uh, the ACT in the Northern Territory, not to be able to legislate on something like this... <coughs> puts the citizens, the people who elected those governments, in a position of being second-class citizens. So it is a pretty important issue from, from a territory rights point of view. But um, the Liberal Democrats and I, uh, we're libertarians. We don't believe the government should interfere in our lives unless it's to prevent harm to others. And uh, telling you that you can't end your own life uh, when, you, when you choose to um, is obviously a pretty serious uh, level of intervention. We can kill ourselves if we can do it by our own hand. It's not against the law, and at least the government stays out of that aspect of our lives. But as soon as we become too feeble, uh, too weak, too un unwell to do it for ourselves, and we need somebody to help us to end our lives, no matter how much you know we want to end those lives, no matter how conscious we are of the decision we're making, the government says, no, we know better than you, you're not allowed to do that. Anybody who you enlist to, to get your help uh, to get help from, uh, we're going to uh, prosecute them. And um, that's a serious government overreach and uh, frankly, uh, from from my point of view, from the Liberal Democrats' point of view, it's way too, over, uh, way too much overreach and it should be ended. The Northern Territory and the ACT governments uh, have taken out a full page ad today supporting your bill. I presume you've been in contact with them. Do you know if either of the territories uh, have in place, uh, have plans to um, bring a, bring into the how their houses of parliament again an assisted dying bill, or are they just lobbying and agitating to regain control of their own laws? Um, as far as I know, the Northern Territory has no immediate plans to do anything on that front. The ACT has a an inquiry in progress. It hasn't completed its report um, yet, and. Um, uh, they haven't actually uh, even uh, done an interim report yet, but I get the distinct impression that uh, they are moving in that direction. They're not unique there by any means, of course. Uh, we've had, most of the states now have had this debate, and in fact Vic Victoria has legislated uh, to allow uh, assisted suicide under certain circumstances. The other states that debated it so far have pulled back and, and haven't gone that far. The ACT is going through that similar process. I imagine, I don't, I don't know for sure, but I imagine uh, they will reach a stage, assuming my bill passes, where they might uh, consider some some bill. And, and they're, what, they're, what, they're not at that stage yet. What do you think the chances are of your bill passing the Senate? Everyone's, well, everyone's allowed a conscience vote. The, yeah. the Prime Minister has deemed that. What are the numbers yeah. as, as you yeah. count them? Uh, as we count them, uh, 40 to 42. A majority is 39. And we count them at 40 to 42. I haven't been specifically counting the numbers myself. Um, Richard De Natale's office and also Andrew Denton's and, and his people have been counting numbers. I've been helping them somewhat by talking to senators who they haven't reached or they haven't been clear what their position is. Um, but 
I haven't been adding them all up uh, in the way that they have, and they're telling me it's somewhere between 40 and 42. If that's the way the debate and the vote goes this week, that um, passes through the Senate, um, but there's no guarantee, in fact, there's no guarantee at all that it will go to the House and become law. You said that, Malcolm Turnbull, you had a deal with him in return for your support for uh, the ABCC, that it would be debated in both houses. Malcolm Turnbull says there was no deal. Yes, I, I've heard Matthias Cormann say there was no deal, but of course uh, he wasn't present. And I haven't actually heard um, uh, Malcolm Turnbull say there was no deal. I have heard him wanting to back away from it, though. Um, do you our, have any proof there was a deal? Did you write anything down? <coughs> no, I don't, I don't do deals with the Prime Minister in writing. I mean, you know, uh, I assume he's honourable and I'm honourable and uh, that we'll stick to our deal. So what do you believe the Prime Minister promised there, you? There, there were witnesses. We have There were staffers present in the room and uh, they can verify it. And uh, I'm not going to name them, of course, but uh, but they were there. And, and of course, uh, I have discussed it subsequently with the Prime Minister. Um, we were discussing timing. It was not the nature of the, the deal. It was simply a matter of... Um, when when is this going to occur? I've been actually very patient. I waited almost two years for this to for this to occur. Well, can you um, just tell us now what it is you believe or you yeah. say that Prime Minister promised you? Yeah. Well, um, if it passes the Senate, that he would allow it to be introduced, debated, and voted on on a conscience basis in the House. That that was the deal. And I made I made no demands as to how he would vote, as to what he would say about it, what he would recommend. Simply to allow a debate and a vote in the House if it passed the Senate. And now you've said that if the government doesn't facilitate it into the House, if it passes the Senate, you will consider withdrawing support for government legislation. Have yeah. you had any word back from the Prime Minister's office since you issued that ultimatum? Uh, no, no. There's been no communications on that front. Um, the, the issue is much bigger than just me and, and my, communi uh, my cooperation with the government in the Senate. Of course, the government needs eight out of ten of the crossbenchers to uh, achieve a majority in the Senate. Its legislation won't pass if the Greens and, and Labor are opposed to it and it doesn't get that, those numbers. So it's, it's a pretty important issue for us in the Senate in the, on the crossbench to uh, think that the government will do a deal in order to get our vote and then it will deny there was a deal later. It's a pretty big deal. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big issue and it doesn't just affect me. I don't think the government really wants to go down that path um, Matthias Cormann in particular, who, who does most of the negotiations with the, um, with the uh, Senate crossbench, knows very, very well the implications of that. It certainly is a big issue and it's a, a fraught issue for many and views are very um, conflicted on this issue. Uh, over the weekend there was a report from a senior Australian medical ethicist um, who'd spent decades observing euthanasia in Canada and other countries. I'm talking about Professor Margaret Somerville, who says Australia should definitely not, not go down this path, that it's not delivering as promised. She said in many cases overseas, pain and suffering were not the primary motivator for an assisted dying request. There was fear of being a burden on relatives. It was a more common reason in patient surveys. Mm. Are you sure that this is a good debate to be having? Yes. Look, um, I, I use the example of David Goodall, the 104-year-old uh, scientist who recently had to go off to Switzerland in order to lend, uh, end his life. There was no question he knew what he was doing. There was no question he knew what he wanted. Um, he, he wasn't depressed. Um, uh, he, he even denied being sick, apart from the fact that, you know, he was very, very old. And, but his body had just um, given up on him. And he wanted to die. Now... My view is, and I think the views of people who agree with me, is that, um, yes, consent is important. Yes, you have to know what you're doing. It has to be... You have, there are precautions required to ensure it's not coerced. Nobody should be forced into it, made to feel that they, they're a burden on anybody else, and uh, they, uh, so they need to end their lives in order to stop being a nuisance. There are ways to, to achieve that. There are ways to ensure that consent is voluntary, that, that this is not being forced. But David Goodall is absolute classic example. He couldn't even end his own life in Australia because the government said, no, you can't do it. The government's got no business telling him or anybody else in his position, you can't end your own okay. life. They, do, they don't own him. 
he owns his own life, as we all do. Senator Lane Helm, just finally bring it back to this uh, implied threat that you won't support the government legislation if it doesn't honour the deal you say the Prime Minister made with you and allow this uh, to be voted and debated in the lower house, should it pass the Senate. Um, what is your ultimatum? Media reports suggest you uh, won't withdraw your support for the corporate tax cuts, but you would not support the National Energy Guarantee. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you, well, that... do you support the National Energy Guarantee anyway? Um, well, you know, we don't really know what its final shape is. Um, I'm still waiting to see what the details are on that. But as it stands, no, I'm not really convinced on it. There's lots of bills, though, where um, my, my Liberal Democrats' principles of small government, low taxes, get the government off your back and out of your pocket, the, the bills that don't really make any difference either way. So I could go either way on lots and lots of bills. But many of those bills, the government needs my support if it's going to get eight out of ten cross benches. So, you know, it, they have to persuade me to vote for their bills many, many times. And uh, they're not going to be able to if, if, we, um, if they don't stick to their deals. And it's as simple as that. the same go for the others in the alliance with you, the Catter Australia parties, Fraser Anning and Cory Bernardi? Um, well, they're in the same situation as me. When they do a deal with the government, they have to know that the government will stick to it. What's the point of doing a deal if the government's not going to uh, stand by it? Um, so, yeah, they're all well, in the same... Well, a lot of people will be saying, what's the point? Why should senators be doing deals, trading off something as important as a euthanasia bill uh, and the right to debate it with the building, ABCC? Well, because the government, it was a double dissolution issue. The government regarded it as extremely important. I didn't see it as, a, as anywhere near as important as the government did. But the government was really keen to have my vote on it. It wouldn't have passed without my vote. Um, so the, the obvious thing is, well, if, if I'm going to vote for this bill, which I'm not particularly enamoured with, um, what can I get that actually improves liberty, that improves our freedom, um, gets the government off our back, um, in an area okay. that I think really matters, and, and assisted suicide is an area that matters. David Lionhelm, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure.